So we've made our way through the six phase dynamic warm up sequence. We got down on one knee, we did a lot of volume on the face pulls to prime that upper back with our power primer movement. And now it's ready to perform. We're gonna get in, we're gonna do barbell floor press. This is gonna limit the range of motion with the bar coming to our chest because it's cut off by the arms hitting the ground, but it's also gonna be able to overload our shoulders and our triceps with this movement pattern. What we're gonna be doing here is training it for strength. So we're going in, we're gonna have heavy ramp up sets all the way up until we get to a working set for four reps that is challenging. We're gonna stay there for three sets and we're gonna to try to chase some heavy weights because again, this is our performance lift of the day. So I always recommend that when we're doing the big barbell lifts for the day, we start with an empty 45 pound barbell. So we get a feel for the motion right off the bat. You can compare to what it was last week or what it was a couple days ago. From the bar, we're gonna take it all the way up and get as heavy as possible for four rep schemes. So these first light sets, we're gonna climb up by quarters and then we're gonna throw some 45s on and we're gonna see where we end up. Three. So your most powerful position is also gonna be your most pain-free position, so keep that in mind. Good. We have minimal mass, we need to accelerate it more. As the mass goes up, our acceleration is gonna go down, but we're still thinking about driving as hard as possible. Good. For big strength movements, I like to stay between 90 and 120 seconds. So we're thinking about a minute and a half, two minutes, mm -hmm. just keeping the pace up. If you get to those top end work sets, you need a little bit longer, that's fine. Auto-regulate, but just make sure that it's not 10, 15 minutes between sets. Right. Three. Now, does this have more intention on the pec in general than versus a bench press? It's gonna be the opposite. Anytime that you can put a muscle into a more stretch position, so thinking like a stretch push-up mm -hmm. or really a deep dumbbell press, mm -hmm. that's putting the pec through more of a range of motion, more through a stretch, mm -hmm. so that's gonna isolate it more. Okay. This is not doing that because, again, we're cutting off the range of motion, so it's gonna to flip to more of a, a secondary action for the triceps gotcha. and then for the shoulders in general. Gotcha, okay, cool. So we're climbing up here to the working weights, guys. We're gonna get to a three top end sets. We're gonna add little by little here to really just get one true 4RM for our barbell floor press. Three. You never want to grind out ugly reps, but you want to get it to the point where you don't have another rep in the tank with pristine form. Good. Now, with weight belts, with bodybuilding, and even power training and performance training, you know, to stabilize yourself, I know a lot of people use that. Yeah. How do you feel about that? A weight belt is something that advanced lifters should be using. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you strap on and you hope and pray that you don't get hurt with. Right. Okay. It's not a form of a Band-Aid. Right. If you're using it as a crutch because your lower back hurts, that's not a way to have success with it. It needs to assist the lift, not hold you to the fuck together. Right, gotcha.
So that last rep was slow. That's how we know that we hit our top. We're done for the day on that. Good. So before we strip the bar down here, we're gonna actually implement something called a neural drive drop set. We're gonna be hitting three singles in a row, boom, 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 and we're gonna be dropping the weight every single time. The goal here is to excite the nervous system once again before we get into our accessory work. Don't rush yourself, get everything in the position. We're gonna be re-racking between each of these. Okay. So you can see the speed increase on every single rep as the weight got lower. So we're gonna reset all these. We're gonna get Ruben to do exactly the same thing, bringing them down little by little. Explosive. Drive it. Good. 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 Last one. Good. And now we should be ready to go into our accessory work, our pressing, our back work, with a little bit more explosiveness, a better feel, and better energy. My experience feels great. This is a different type of training that I've done before. But for somebody who's just now getting into this type of style of training, yeah. it'll be very different because everybody in the bodybuilding world is trying to chase hypertrophy. This is interesting though. So Ruben mentioned the mythical hypertrophy rep range. Mythical. It's between eight and 15 <laughs> reps. We've had science for 30 years saying this was the way to build maximal muscular hypertrophy. But guess what? We got more science out in the last five years saying that we can chase anywhere from power to strength, hypertrophy, even metabolic stress work up to 50 reps mm. and still get a growth stimulus off of it. So the more well-rounded approach, the healthier you can be. The healthier you can be, the more effort you can put into your training, the more frequency you can put into your training, and it comes full circle with muscle growth. Mm -hmm. Now that we did our big performance lift, almost like a power lifter, we're gonna go in, we're gonna chase some volume now, we're gonna get that mind-muscle connection up, and we're gonna get into more bodybuilding style training, getting our shoulders into a good position in order to pain-free press, and then building a ton of volume on the backside of the body to get those training ratios up between posterior and anterior chain. Thank <laughs> you.